Christ, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our lasting from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that, when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains in you and will be with you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. All the Masses this weekend will be offered for the repose of the souls of Dorothy, Dorothy Heisler, Anthony Kosky, Barbara Murray, Anna Musari, Tony Rizzo, Maria Zane, and a special intention for Gina Sintowski. And I continue to keep all of you in our prayers here at this parish 
and we ask that you continue to keep us in your prayers as well. As you probably heard, uh, there has been some news about the reopening plan for parishes throughout the Archdiocese, and I'd like to share with you a letter from our Cardinal. He says, I pray that you and your loved ones are healthy. As you may have seen, recently shared throughout the news, our multi-phase plan for reopening churches throughout the Archdiocese of Chicago. Specifically, this will consist of phase one, which will allow for parishes to reopen for private baptisms, reconciliation, weddings, and funerals with a limit of 10 attendees. Phase 1A will allow for parishes to reopen for private prayer and adoration with a limit of 10 attendees. And Phase 2 will allow for reopening for weekday and weekend masses for larger groups, depending on the guidelines from the state and the capacity of the church building. So here at St. Mary Perpetual Help, All Saints St. Anthony, first and foremost, it is important for everyone to understand that our efforts will prioritize the safety and well-being of all while maintaining due respect and reverence for the sacraments and liturgical norms of our faith. As your pastor, I will assemble a parish reopening leadership team with parishioner co-captains to lead our efforts. Together, we will attend uh, required training from the Archdiocese to ensure that our parish reopening plan conforms to the guidelines developed by the Archdiocese in collaboration with civil and healthcare authorities. We will also receive a starter kit of protective and cleaning supplies as well as guidance on purchasing and maintaining those supplies for ongoing reopening efforts. So as I mentioned, the parish reopening leadership team members and I will need to complete required training, which will take place this week and the following week after Memorial Day. And once we complete the training, we will need to review and complete tasks assigned to all parishes, ours in particular as part of reopening certification process to be approved by the Archdiocese. And so here at the parish, this training and certification approval will only open our church once the reopening leadership team and I myself as the pastor are confident that we have the right volunteers in place to make it possible to reopen. So I will keep you posted on um, after we provide our uh, volunteers and the staff here with the training necessary for the reopening phase and then um, you will receive emails, which is why we are collecting emails for all the parishioners so we can communicate all this to you. Um, it will also be on our website as well and our, on our Facebook uh, page. This Thursday is Ascension Thursday, so we will be filming the Ascension Thursday Mass uh, this week as well. So look for that on our website and on YouTube as well. So we'll have the Ascension Thursday probably posted late Wednesday night, um, so you can watch it anytime on Thursday. And just once again, thank you so much for your ongoing uh, generosity and uh, continuing to support the parish financially and spiritually. Um, we can't do it without you. So I wanna thank all the people here at the parish and people throughout the world who continue to uh, give to this beautiful parish to to continue its upkeep for the operating expenses and also for a lot of the um, work that we have to continue to do on the work on the uh, church itself. So you know we are uh, working at trying to um, patch up the roof, looking at a new uh, copper dome. So anything you can give both in the preservation fund and in the regular operating uh, budget would be greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for your ongoing generosity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I think all of us can agree that prayer is a very intimate form of communicating with God. Jesus promises those who remain in him will bear much fruit. And last week we heard the discourse from our Lord about his relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit. This week he continues his teaching on his relationship with the Father and the Spirit. But he also reassures us that if we remain in him, if we keep his commandments, our joy will be full. Our joy will be complete. Jesus even goes further to say that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will move mountains if you just have faith. And he's applying this to prayer today. 
If you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. We pray to our Father in heaven, because the Father loves us, and we know that whatever we ask in Jesus' name, we are petitioning the Father as well. And because Jesus came forth from the Father, he shows us the Father's love in a very tangible way. And this makes prayer, praying easier because we know who we are addressing and who we are deepening our love with. In the early church, the apostles prayed often for each other and for the people they were called to serve. Jesus promised them that their prayer would drive out unclean spirits and heal people from many diseases and illnesses. They also experienced, as a result of their prayer, much joy in the conversion of so many people who embrace the Lord and his gift of salvation. When the early apostles prayed over the people, they would lay hands on them, and the Holy Spirit was then able to work through them in order to sanctify and redeem. Jesus promised the early apostles and disciples that once he ascends into heaven, he is going to send the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, who will lead us into all truth and to sanctify us through the sacraments. In order for us then to receive the sanctifying power of God's Spirit, Jesus says that if we love him, we will keep his commandments. Therefore, our joy will be complete. As I mentioned in last week's uh, homily in John's Gospel, Jesus constantly re reveals his relationship with the Father and the Spirit. And he wants us to come to a deeper understanding of our relationship with the Holy Trinity as a result of our own baptism. And that's why all of the apostles went out right after Jesus ascended into heaven and they baptized people in the Holy Trinity. They laid hands on them so as to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And as a result, they would bear much fruit because of this tremendous gift from God. As I mentioned, prayer is a very intimate form of not only communicating with God our needs and our desires throughout the day, but most importantly, it does foster our relationship of love with the Divine Trinity. And prayer allows us then to remain in His love. Just as we converse daily with our loved ones, our family members, our friends, in order to build up our relationships here on earth, Jesus encourages us daily to communicate our joys, our sorrows, our trials and difficulties, and also the things that we are thankful for. We can also say that prayer allows us then to be shaped and, fa and fashioned into the disciple God is calling us to become. Prayer also allows us to listen to the voice of the Lord, just like, like our Blessed Mother did perfectly, in discerning his will for our lives. Prayer is an intimate form of spiritual therapy, we could say, in that God teaches us divine truths. He heals us of so many afflictions. He forgives us our sins. Prayer is also God's way of pruning our soul, allowing him to prune out the vices and the sins that can damage and weaken our spiritual life. Even if we have a hard time praying, Jesus promises us the help of the paraclete, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, who will advocate on our behalf. St. Paul knew this all too well when he said, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. We also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what is that we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit too comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because it intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. A saint once said, your prayer is the cry of a child to God as Father. For God is in seeing you as redeemed by the precious blood of his beloved Son, beholds no longer a mere human creature. He sees instead the reflection of his own divine life. For when you are in the state of grace, 
your entire being shares in the life of the triune God. Your prayer, then, partakes of that which is properly divine. By grace, you are a member of the family of God our Father, and you have been given a right to the internal inheritance of the beatific vision. We could say then that prayer, in prayer, God desires that our desires be perfectly conformed to his will. And oftentimes in prayer, however, we're too busy telling him what we want or what we desire. God knows our desires, he knows our wants, and he wants what's best for us. Our desires and wants may not be what is necessary for our salvation, though. So think about the times that we have prayed like never before for maybe the recovery of someone who is sick, a relative, a family member, or a friend, and the person dies. The question arises again more intensely, and I think personally, than ever before. Why did God not answer my prayer? If he said, ask and you shall receive, then why wasn't my prayer answered? Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Well, what if we lost our job or our home at this present time? What if we're unable to pay bills and we ask God to help and nothing seems to happen? What are we to think? What are we to make of this? Does God answer our prayers? We could say that just because things may not go our way when we do pray, it does not mean that God is not answering our prayers. C.S. Lewis once said, that's not why I pray. I don't pray to change God. I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, waking and sleeping. My prayer doesn't change God. It changes me. And as I was thinking about that this past week, so many different ways in which I pray, pray for so many people, and yet it seems like my prayers aren't being answered if people aren't getting a job or if people continue to remain sick or ill, I think we can listen to the voice of the Lord and deep within that petition, ask and you shall receive, we know that God is allowing us to be changed and conformed to his divine will. St. Augustine knew that so well. God does not change, nor do we pray to change God's will prayer changes us, and it conforms us sometimes in the most painful way to God's divine will. The experience of darkness and pain and suffering and of dryness, maybe emptiness, challenge us then to move closer to God with faith and hope in order to understand his providence. Many times it may not seem to make sense, but if we persevere in prayer, God comforts and guides us in ways beyond our imagining. St. Augustine came to the conclusion that we come to know God's will not through emotions or feelings, but rather through a strong and unwavering faith, as the psalmist proclaims, blessed are they who hope or trust in the Lord. Most of the time, all we can do is cling to the assurance of faith. God's providence for us takes us far beyond our own terms. God takes us beyond life and death, People speak oftentimes of finding comfort in God's will, but this does not mean comfort in the ordinary sense of ease and good feeling. It means comfort in the original sense of the word, strength. The word comes from the Latin fortis, which means strong. So we could say that God answers our prayer by giving us a strength, a kind of strength we never knew we had or rather a kind of strength we did not have until the moment we needed it the most. Our Lord teaches us today that God will never refuse us anything if it be in accordance with his holy will. We pray today that our joy deep within us, that fruit of the Spirit will be complete, will be full, but we know that that joy and that peace will never be completely full in our lives until we rest, rest in the divine trinity in heaven, in the life of God's life that he allows us to experience a little bit here on earth. So we continue to ask, we continue to knock, 
we continue to seek. And we know that whatever we ask of the Lord, he will grant us, if it be in accordance with his will. So let us ask for an increase of faith today as we receive the Eucharist in a spiritual way that we ask for that strength and that fortis to move forward in perseverance and that we endure, that that endurance will allow us then to see God's will unfold in our lives and that we put our trust in the Lord and in his divine grace working always through us, most importantly through the sacraments, but most intimately in our prayer life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and get in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Be 
pleased, O God, to pray and bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Almighty ever living God, who restores to eternal life the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Michael, the Archangel, defend us. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go.